Welcome friends, this is Leah from Balance and Beam Yoga. Come on over, take a seat and let's talk. Oh, wait, you're saying that it's not always comfortable to take a seat like this in a yoga practice? I got you, I understand. This is not always comfortable for me either. In fact, personally, I suffer from lower back disc problems and also an undiagnosed hip problem that my team of orthopedists, physical therapists, and chiropractors have been trying to help me diagnose and treat for several months now. So I understand you if you've got pain and discomfort in a simple seated position. And if you've taken a yoga class before, or if you've never taken a yoga class, you will learn that we often spend quite a bit of time in a seated position just like this. And it's, and it's meant to be calming and uh, comfortable, but it's always not. And we may spend five or 10 minutes in this position uh, practicing our breathing, our pranayama, or meditating. And so it is very important for us to try to find as comfortable a position as possible. So I've got a couple tips for you that I wanna share. So if you find yourself in a situation like mine, um, or maybe you've never had an injury before, but you just show up to class one day and you're a little bit tighter um, in one area or the other, it can impact the way you sit in your practice. So here, here we go, let's talk through a couple tips. First of all, remember that the goal, when you're sitting in easy pose, that's the pose I was just in, Sukhasana, that you want a very straight back from your tailbone all the way to the top, the crown of your head. And also we want our shoulders stacked upon our rib cage, stacked upon our hips, but lifted out of each other so that they're not collapsing into each other. So the first thing you wanna do is just shift around your sits bones and move around those tissues so that you're able to sit and ground right on top of those sits bones. Um, the next thing you want to do is again to think of that straight, straight back so that you're sitting up as, as um, straight as possible. Your shoulders are relaxed and they're rolling down your back. And then finally, your head may have a slight ten, chin tuck so that you have a nice straight line through the back of the neck and the head and you're not craning your neck up or bending it too far down. So you're looking for that nice straight position from the tip of the head all the way to the tailbone. So if Getting in that position is uncomfortable. There's a couple things you could do. First of all, try switching your feet. So I tend to always sit in the same position, but you could simply try switching it out for a couple times. This will balance out the body. See if maybe it's more comfortable. This definitely feels weird for me when I switch it around. It's just not my natural way of doing it, but it will be good to keep both sides of the body balanced. So try switching um, sides if you can. Another thing you can do is, um, you can purchase a block. This is a yoga block. I, um, you can purchase this at Target, Walmart, buy it online at Amazon, Academy and Sporting Goods Store, or even discount retailers like uh, TJ Maxx and Marshalls. This is not a fancy material. It is foam, but it's very supportive. And um, it's not very expensive either. This one in particular is less than $10. They do come in fancier models and carry higher prices, but this one also works just fine. And so what you can do with this is sit it underneath your sits bones. So I'm going to sit right on top of this yoga block and then I'm going to take my easy pose. Uh, easy pose also, if you haven't seen it or figured it out, it's crisscross. Um, so sitting crisscross applesauce with your kids, you may have heard that, that's what it is. And so you can sit on this block and this helps lift the hips up, um, up higher than um, kind of the angle here in your sits bones and it's above your ankles and then also the knees are slightly lower than the hip angle as well. So I find this is easier on my knees and on my hips. So that the block here is actually sustaining a lot of my weight as opposed to my body parts below it. So I think this is a great alternative. Again, when you're here, try every once in a while flipping the order of your feet just to balance out the body and see if you have a side that um, is, is preferable. So hopefully that helps you get comfortable in a seated position. If it doesn't, if it doesn't help, um, maybe you need to try a position that's different altogether. So the next thing I'll offer up is kneeling. So kneeling will look like this. My knees are together, my ankles are together as well, and I'm sitting back on my heels. Now again, this can feel pretty intense for a couple of reasons. First of all, you, some people don't have the flexibility in their feet and ankles for the tops of the feet to um, sit on the ground or touch the ground while sustaining the weight of the body on top of it. And then secondly, this is a very um, tight, closed angle for the knees. And sometimes people with um, former knee injuries 
don't have the flexibility in the knee um, or the cushioning in the joint anymore, again, to sustain this type of position for very long. So if that's the case, let's start with the ankles. What you can do here is just grab um, your ordinary bath towel from home, roll it up, and then you can stick this underneath the ankles. So what we'll do here is I'll put my ankles right on top of uh, the roll of the towel, and then I will sit. And now the ankle, or rather the towel, is um, taking some of the weight um, of my body off of my body part. So this is right away a lot more comfortable. Another thing you can do, um, if that still doesn't feel right, is you can grab your yoga block and you can sit on the yoga block. Now to do this, the uh, knees are going to separate at this point as well as the feet. And so it does actually cause a bit of an internal rotation of the hip, which again, I think is, is um, really nice. Sometimes we do a lot of hip openers where we're externally rotating the hip joint. When you're sitting on the block this way, because my feet are sliding out to the side, um, the hips are slightly rotating inwards. So it's a nice counterpost to what we do already so frequently um, in yoga classes and every day. So this is one alternative. If this still isn't comfortable, maybe try two blocks. I don't have a second block with me right now, but you just simply stack it and then sit back on it and you've, you're lifted that now even higher. So um, again, the benefit here is the hips are lifted up out above the knee and the block itself is holding up the weight of the body as opposed to the body parts below it. So a uh, great alternative. And one other thing to try again, while you're still in kneeling pose, um, rather than opening up um, the feet and the knees, is you can get a cushion. This is not a fancy cushion and there are ones that are better than this that are made for yoga, but I don't have one at the moment. So I'm just using something I found in my house. It's pretty small and it, and it tends to um, collapse pretty quickly, which is why it's not great, but it's better than nothing. And so what we do here is you stick this um, on top of your calves as close to the knee, underneath the knee as possible, and then you sit back on it. And so again, I've lifted my hips up above um, the knees a little bit more, and then the pillow is absorbing some of the weight of the body. So kind of a dual benefit there. And from here, it's a little bit more comfortable to sit in this pose for a longer amount of time. So um, a couple of tips there. We talked about um, using the block in easy pose. We talked about using a towel while you're kneeling, using a pillow or a cushion while you're kneeling, and also using a block um, in, in hero's pose, which is where we open up the knee slightly um, so that we can place the, the block inside. So hopefully one of those few adjustments will help you find a position that's comfortable. Start with 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes and work up and see if you can get to five to 10 minutes or more as you get to the point where you're lengthening your practice of your meditation and your pranayama. So it takes time. Remember that yoga, like any sport or art or most, most you know, hobbies, it's a skill building exercise. It takes time and practice. We're not born necessarily to sit this way for a long amount of time or to put our, put our bodies in some of these poses. So be gentle on your body, be patient with yourself, and remember your building skills. So keep practicing and work up slowly over time and eventually you'll get there. Thanks for joining. Stay tuned for more tips. Namaste.